brand new study shows that fermented foods leads to a healthier microbiome. A healthier microbiome leads to a healthier gut, which vastly improves your entire bodily health and your overall well-being. So let's break this down. And at the end of this article, I'll give you my favorite fermented foods that we actually make within our own home. So let's get started. But before we do, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski and welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you want to get all my natural health videos and even the ones we don't put on social media because we don't want to deal with censorship issues, go to www www.drz.tv. Let's dive into this article. Fermented foods may seem like just another health fad, but a small trial suggests that they can help strike a healthier balance in the body's gut bacteria. Now, we've known for a long time, if you follow my channel, I always talk about fermented foods and how important they are. In a study of 36 people, researchers found that those randomly assigned to eat plenty of fermented foods such as yogurt, kimchi, and kombucha they showed an increase in their gut microbiome diversity, a great way to get a large diversity of probiotics is to eat fermented food. In a video that I did within the last 30 days, I had recommended that you eat fermented food every single day because I think it's that important. You don't have to eat a ton of it. You just need to eat some and include it in your diet daily. The microbiome refers to the vast collection of bacteria in other microorganisms that naturally dwell in the gut. Research in recent years has been revealing just how important those microbes are to the body's normal processes from metabolism and nutrient synthesis to immune defenses to brain function. Now, let me break this down a little bit. Okay, so first of all, the microbiome, it's not referring to just the gut bacteria. It's referring to the microorganisms that are on your entire body, on your skin, in your sinus cavities, um, that are on your lungs, in your organ systems. It literally is referring to all of them because we are just covered with different good, healthy bugs. Now, it says in this article they're important for the body's nor normal processes, like your metabolism. One of the things that we know from research is that you can take someone who has insulin resistance and you can introduce the bacteria to them in the form of a probiotic and it will help improve their insulin resistance problems. You can take somebody who has nutrient deficiencies. They also will improve their nutrient capacity simply by introducing certain probiotics because they help produce nutrients. About 80% of your immune system is within your gut health. If your immune system is struggling, your gut health is likely struggling and vice versa. And also brain function. There's a lot of emerging research in showing that basically people who have decreased cognitive function, they also have a decrease of certain types of probiotics. And if you follow my channel in the near future, I'm going to be starting to talk a lot more about very specific bugs because there's some incredible research coming out. And I'm actually working with different scientists on this and PhDs, and it's truly fascinating. So there'll be a lot of good information to come. There is still much to learn about what constitutes a healthy microbiome, but broadly speaking, greater diversity is believed to be healthier. That's based in part on research showing that people with obesity or diseases like diabetes and colitis tend to have less diverse microbiomes than healthy people. And like I said from the beginning, you can introduce them to certain probiotics and all of a sudden these problems that they're facing will start to reverse. You didn't do anything but change their gut bacteria. It's truly incredible. Now, in addition, scientists have found much greater microbiome diversity among certain indigenous populations who still live pre-industrial lifestyles and typically do not suffer from modern ills like obesity and clogged heart arteries. The makeup of any one, one person's microbiome is influenced by many things, including genes, health conditions, stress, and medication use, particularly antibiotics. Now, this is something that, like, not enough people are talking about, but there is a true disaster of a problem of people overusing antibiotics. Uh, and not only is it people overusing them, but it's obviously doctors over prescribing them. I mean, you can literally go to the doctor's office and get antibiotics at any given time and it's crushing people's health. The article goes on to say, but diet is considered to be a key player in the Western typical diet is heavy in processed foods and low in whole plant foods, but it also 
is very low in probiotic rich foods. And this has many deficiencies that could make for a less diverse microbiome. And so that's one of the things that's very important to understand is that just the typical Western diet, though it's great that we can go to the store and we can get clean food. The problem is, is that our food is so clean and we're not going and eating from our gardens. We're just not getting those different microbes that we would normally get if we were to go and plant our own food and eat it. And so what we can do in this particular case is we can really focus on eating probiotic rich foods. Now, these foods that are probiotic rich, they're referred to as fermented foods, okay? And fermented foods are actually pretty expensive to buy. If you go to the store, you buy fermented pickles, expensive. If you buy fermented sauerkraut, it's expensive. And one of the reasons it's expensive because fermented foods has to be refrigerated. So as the, the let's say if a typical sauerkraut that's more of a vinegar base or a pickle that's more of a vinegar base, they don't have to be refrigerated. So it's much easier and cheaper to ship them and store them and for these grocery stores to manage them. Whereas like once you get into the fermented stuff, it has to be refrigerated. So it's more costly. So therefore you pay the price when you go and buy it. So yes, you can go buy fermented food, but you can also make it. And let me give you an example of some different ones that we make in our own home or vice versa. You can actually go buy them as well. Now, uh, sauerkraut is one of them. It's very simple to make. You literally just chop up a whole bunch of cabbage and you know you put uh, salt on it and, and stick it in a jar and uh, let it ferment on your counter. It's very, very simple to make. And uh, what, I, what I'll do too is I believe that we have a fermented foods guide ebook. And if I have one and I can dig it up, I will put it in the description of this video. Okay. We also have a probiotic guide. I can put that in there too. You can download both of them. It's, it's a great uh, wealth of information for anybody trying to improve their gut health. So you can make sauerkraut at your home. It's extremely cheap and easy to do and very delicious. Um, kombucha is another one that you can buy in the store or you can make it in, in your home. If you make kombucha in your home, it literally costs like pennies. If you buy in the store, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's so cheap to make it in your home. Um, another thing that we like to make in our home is sourdough bread. That's with fermented, um, you know, sourdough, which is really delicious. I love sourdough bread. Um, kimchi is another great one that you can make. Uh, yogurt is something you can easily buy in the store, but it's actually pretty easy to make yogurt yourself too. A lot of people do it. And, um, and uh, so there's yogurt, which is a good one. Uh, cheese is another good source. I don't recommend making cheese. Some of you may be a little bit more savvy than we are, but uh, it's probably easier to buy it. So cheese is something that has um, uh, you know good probiotics in it as well. And then um, the other thing you can do is you can get kefir grains and you can make a lot of really good drinks with that. And so uh, you can make fermented pickles uh, as well at home and you can buy it. So these are all things that we like to have in the way of fermented foods and things that you can easily go and incorporate in your daily routine. Now, the average person has zero fermented foods in their diet, and it's absolutely horrible. When we look at gut conditions in general, they're on the rise, and um, it's something that we have to really be aware of. Now, these good healthy probiotics, remember, they're going to protect your gut and if you have a weak microbiome, you're far more susceptible to yeast infections, bacterial infections, skin conditions, autoimmune diseases. So it's very important to make sure that we're always doing everything we can to influence a very positive and healthy microbiome. One of the things, as I mentioned, we can do is take probiotics daily. I do that personally, but also do your best to increase your intake of fermented foods. Check in the description and see what guides I was able to dig up for you. I'll see you in the next video.